Well, good morning. Welcome to St. Matthew this morning. It is a beautiful day today. Let us rise and sing. All the earth will sing your praises. sins away, oh God. You give, you gave your life away for us. You came down, you saved us through the cross. And our hearts are changed because of your great love. sins away, oh God, and you give, you gave your life away for us, and you came down, you saved us through the cross, and our hearts are changed because of your great be seated. So this past week we had a wonderful vacation Bible school with lots of kids and if you want to see some really neat videos you have to go to our website and watch what Vicar Dave does. I've been told he shouldn't be allowed to preach anymore. <laughs> On the Facebook page. Got to go to the Facebook page. Not the website. Okay. Well, some of us are old and don't know all that social media stuff, you know. So your Connect card has on it, besides a place to fill out your information, three different things that you can check off. One is to help with the soccer and Sunday school program I talked about last week. Another one is about a uh, small group experience Bible study we'll be doing uh, this fall called The Story, and it's for folks that maybe haven't spent a lot of time reading the Bible or know a lot about it. It's a good way to come learn, but also for those of you who think you know all about it, you can also show up and, and be part of that class as well. And then also um, about if 
confirmation program. That will be starting, so there might be somebody here that needs to sign up for that as well. And, you know, every year the church uh, takes in uh, gifts from people to give to a scholarship fund, and we have some checks to hand out to a few folks, so if they want to come for it and get these, um, they're going off to college, and we hope that God will bless them and they'll be successful. So Natalie, you get to be first, because you end in Burke. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. So Andrew, and I don't know if Ben's around. He's on his way. You know, so Andrew, who's going to finish college finally this year. <laughs> you want to take Ben's since he's not here yet? I'll, I'll, take, I'll gladly take both of them. <laughs> <laughs> and Aaron? Aaron Hummel? He'll be off to be successful in school. And then we have one more, it was for Mackenzie Quinn, but she's working to help pay for her school right now, so she's not here to pick up her check. So, the lessons for today and next Sunday match with the lessons from last week. It's this three-week scenario going on, and it's important that you kind of know what all three weeks are and how they connect together, so the obvious question is, who knows what was preached on last week, what the sermon was. Now, let me tell you a story. Last Sunday evening, we had dinner. It was Pastor Paul and Vicar Dave and Pastor Aaron and Shirley and Julie and a bunch of other people. And at the beginning of dinner, someone said to Vicar Dave, you did an awesome service, sermon today. So the first question is, who preached last Sunday? Pastor Paul. <laughs> so, you know, that's the first thing is who preached and then what they preached about. And, you know, he preached about the folks coming to Jesus. You know, he had fed the 5,000, right? And they were looking for him and they found him and they wanted more. In fact, the words that Pastor Paul wanted, well, they wanted a free lunch. You know, every day he could just feed them. This would be awesome. This would be great. And so there was a discussion about, no, that's not what you really need. You need bread that will feed you forever. And he ends that gospel lesson with, I am the bread of life, which happens to be the beginning of today's gospel lesson. And so you'll hear more about that as we go on with our service. Pastor Paul. Let us rise as we... Begin our invocation in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. We confess to you, Lord. We are boasted in things other than you. Help us humbly hear and be glad that we may taste and see that the Lord is good. Proclaim the Lord's greatness with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all our fears. We confess to you, O Lord, we have sought after you further than you and have let our fears impede our faith. Give us hearts centered on you that we may taste and see that the Lord is good. Those who look to him are radiant with joy. Their faces shall never be ashamed. My desperation, I pray, and the Lord listened. He saved me from all my troubles. We confess to you, Lord, our thoughts, words, and actions have been faithful, and we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. Hear us and save us from our troubles, that we may taste and see 
that the Lord is good. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and he delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. Your sins have been paid for by Christ. They are forgiven. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. still there is a healer his love is deeper than the sea his mercy is unfailing his arms a fortress for the weak let's say let faith arise Let faith arise I lift my hands to believe again Cause you are my refuge You are my strength As I pour out my heart These things I remember You are faithful God You are faithful still and there is a river that flows from Calvary's tree a fountain for the thirsty your grace that washes over me and let faith arise let faith
let faith arise. Let faith arise. Well, if the children would come forward for the children's message and everyone else be seated. think? Well, let's talk about what might be here. So last week in the Old Testament lesson, we heard about a thing called manna. Does anybody know what manna is? You think manna is bread? Maybe. Anybody else know what manna is? Maybe stuff that can be formed in the bread. So last week, I was talking about we all had dinner together, and we did start talking about what in the world is manna. You know, all we hear about is that it's kind of like dew that was on the ground, you know, when the grass is all wet in the morning, and that's the dew that came down. And so they say it's like the stuff that came down, and some people called it bread, right, that Moses fed them bread in the de desert. And so we were talking about different people had different thoughts about what manna was like because we really don't actually know. And so I thought I would sprinkle some manna here. What do you think? Do you, eat you think? You want to try Can some? I have one. Mm -hmm. You want to try some? <laughs> this manna is pretty good. Mm. I like it. Do you think maybe this is what came down? Maybe it was like cornflakes doesn't quite have sugar on it but you could pick it up and maybe you could put some milk on it and some sugar and then you'd have frosted flakes you know, maybe that's what it was who knows what manna was but I want to teach you a word in Hebrew Hebrew is a pretty hard language can you all say manna you know what the word manna actually means in Hebrew what is this? Like, what is this? Like, this stuff that was all over the ground that they went around and picked up. It was like, what is this? And that's how the word manna came about. So manna doesn't really mean bread. It means, what is this? And so we got to kind of figure out what it is. But it tastes pretty good. You don't want eating? You sure? Ooh. Ooh. Maybe the Israelites were thinking that when they first saw it. They were like looking at it and somebody went down and said, hmm, hmm, it tastes pretty good. You think, what do you think? Does it taste good? It tastes like frosted flakes. Mm. Kind of frosted flakes. Kind of like frosted flakes? Yeah, not bad. Pretty good stuff. You know, so every day they got this manna, day after day after day. Would you get tired of it? What do you think? Yeah, I don't like having the same thing every I don't know. They had it every day, though, and it was pretty good. And, and they got manna, and then they had water that came out of rocks. Mm. Mm. So think about that. Whenever you eat any bread, whenever you have cereal maybe in the morning, what manna look like? You know, some people thought maybe it looked like oatmeal. Some people thought it looked like dust. Some people even said dandruff. I don't know about that one. But it was something that was on the ground that the people picked up and ate every day. Pretty cool. And now you know a Hebrew word. Yeah, I'm eating it off the ground. What do you think about that? Yes, yeah, it is on plastic, so I know it's clean. That way, it won't be hard to clean up either, hopefully. As long as we don't step on it. So think about that whenever you eat bread, eat cereal. What was manna that God gives us bread that gives us eternal life? That's a different kind of bread. And you're going to hear more about that in the sermon today. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, let's pray one second. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us the bread of life. And we thank you for giving us Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Help us to tell others about him. In your name, amen. Okay, you can have some of this. We'll head back to your seats. Sure. I've got to try that now. <laughs> Is it good? Very good. There's plenty of manna, but let us rise in prayer. We pray, gracious Father, your blessed Son came down from heaven to be the true bread that gives life to the world. Grant that Christ, the bread of life, may live in us and we in him, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We hear now the word of the Lord, and you may be seated. Our Old Promise reading today comes from the first book of Kings, the 19th chapter. Now Ahab told Jezebel everything Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah to say, May the gods deal with me, but it ever so, be it ever so severely. If by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like that of one of them. Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. When he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servant there, while he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. He came to a broom bush, sat down under it, and prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the bush and fell asleep. All at once, an angel touched him and said, Get up and eat. He looked around, and there by his head was some bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank, and then lay down again. The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, Get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank. Strengthened by that food, he traveled 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. Our new promise reading today comes from the book of Ephesians, the fourth and fifth chapter. Therefore, I say this and testify in the Lord. You should no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their thoughts. They are darkened in their understanding separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them and because of the hardness of their hearts. Having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity, and they are full of greed. But that isn't what you learned about Christ, since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from him. Throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life, which is corrupted by your deceitful desires. Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on the new self, the one created according to God's likeness in righteousness and purity of the truth. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor, for we are all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry, and do not give the devil a foothold. Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work, doing something useful with their own hands, that they may have something to share with those in need. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, 
brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. Follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children, and walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. This is the word of the Lord. We now have a responsive reading with regard to the fourth petition of the Lord's Prayer and its meeting from the Catechism. I invite you to rise as we join in that. We are reminded today that the Lord provides all things for his people. Our Heavenly Father gives us all we need for this body and life. Luther's small catechism explains what it means when we pray in the Lord's Prayer. Give us this day our daily bread. What does this mean? even to all people, people. But we pray in this petition that God would lead us to realize this and to receive our daily bread with thanksgiving. What is meant by daily bread? Daily bread includes everything that has to do with the support and needs of the body, such as food, drink, clothing, shoes, house, home, land, animals, money, goods, a devout husband or wife, devout children, devout workers, devout and faithful rulers, good government, good weather, peace, health, self-control, good reputation, good friends, faithful neighbors, and the like. Realizing all we have comes from and is a gift from God. We come before him in prayer of thanksgiving for the gifts of this earthly life. And the promises assured of forgiveness and eternal life through his son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We thank you, Lord, for our daily bread for all that we need in this body and life. Grant us hearts removed, hearts moved to freely give us, give as you give and to meet the needs of others. Keep us fed with the grace and mercy of your son, the living bread from heaven. Lord, in your mercy, as your servant Elijah struggled with fears, come to us in our times of fear and anxiety that we be fed and sustained with the life-giving bread of Jesus. We especially thank, ask for your comfort and healing on those we remember in our hearts. Grant peace and healing, hope and health according to your will. Lord, in your mercy. As Jesus taught the people of his day to truly seek and know him. Grant that we continually learn of your love through him as our savior. Guide families and individuals to rejoice in your word that all may be fed with your life-giving grace. Lord, in your mercy, as we gather in the fellowship of the sacrament, grant that we faithfully receive and share the living bread that has come down from heaven assured that our sins are forgiven and our faith is nourished. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. You know, Pastor Blaze, this next song, it says in the chorus, it says, you are good, good, Oh, whoa, it's just a course, right? And I, I saw that you, you, what you did this morning, and I was thinking to myself, I don't know if good would do it. I was thinking more along the lines of, you're great! That's what I, but I couldn't change the song, so I'm going to have to stay with good, good. <laughs> the 
Let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from. Oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life. Oh, he is my song, cause you are good, good. the king of my heart be the wind inside my sails the anchor in the waves oh he is my song let the king of my heart be the fire inside my veins the echo of my days oh he is my song cause you are good Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only Son to bear our sin and be our Savior. You gave to us living bread from heaven to grant life eternal. Prepare our hearts and minds and mouths and souls to receive him in faith as he comes to us still for the forgiveness of sins. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and to drink his blood as he calls us to do in his own promise. Gather us together to celebrate with all the faithful in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory and honor and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread. And after giving thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after the supper, he took the cup. And after giving thanks, he said, this cup is the new promise for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. We believe that this is Christ's true body and blood. And if you do too, you're welcome to our table. So you thought you were getting away without a sermon. <laughs> the Holy Gospel, according to St. John, the sixth chapter. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But as I told you, 
You have seen me and still do not believe. All those the Father gives me will come to me. And whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I shall lose none of those he has given me, but rise, but raise them from on the last day. For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. At this the Jews began to grumble about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I came down from heaven? Stop grumbling among yourself, Jesus answered. No one can come to me unless the father who sent me drags them. And I will raise them up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, they will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard the father and learned from him comes to me. No one has seen the Father except the one who is from God. Only he has seen the Father. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, yet they died. But here is the bread that comes down from heaven, which anyone may eat and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Make my beginning in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I am the bread of life. So if I was saying that, that Pastor Blaze is saying, I am the bread of life, you would like shake your head, say, what are you joking? You know, really? But then I would say in all seriousness, I am the bread of life and whoever comes to me will never hunger. Whoever believes in me will never thirst. And so then it's like, okay, it's time to take them to the Klein mental health unit. Time to get them down from the altar area, and you shouldn't believe that, and absolutely you shouldn't. So you've got Jesus saying, I am the bread of life. Again, you've got to understand the context. The context that Jesus has been ministering now for about two years. You know, it all started when he was baptized by John, and there was that voice this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And there were those miracles of changing water into wine and great healings that took place. Demons driven out and amazing teachings of scripture about God's love. And he would get in these arguments with the religious leaders and tell them they were wrong. And explain what scripture really was saying. And then he fed the 5,000. And so it's in the midst of all of that that he now says, I am the bread of life. But I am to Jewish people is shocking because I am, that's the name of God. And he's going to go on to use those I am's. I am the light of the world. I am the gate for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the true vine. He's calling himself God. That's shocking. As much as you would want to take me to Klein's mental health unit, Jesus is shocking the crowd. Like, who are you? We know your father, Joseph, and your mother. You didn't come down from heaven. Who are you? And he says, I am the bread of life. And if you eat, you will never hunger. If you believe, you will never thirst. You know, the word believe, if you take out your, your gospel lesson, there's a few verses I want to talk about. Maybe you want to underline a couple of words. The first one is 
that first verse, verse 35. Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. That word for believe, I've said it many times in the Greek, pisto, also means faith. It also means to trust. So whoever trusts in me. And then we go down to verse 40. For my Father's will is that anyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life. And I will raise them up on the last day. And then we go down to verse 47. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes has eternal life. So it's like all about believing, believing that we have the bread of life in Jesus Christ. And if you just believe, you have eternal life. And so if you think that believing is all you have to do, guess what? You're absolutely wrong. Because there's some other key verses here that I want to point out. So if we look at verse 37, all those the Father gives me will come to me. Whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. That word forgive is helgo. And we go down to verse 39. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I shall lose none of those that he has given me. And then maybe we go to a more dramatic verse, 44. No one can come to me unless the father who sent me me drags them you might say wait a second I don't remember seeing that in scripture and that's because most translations have draw draw sounds kind of nice but that word drag is the same word that's used for when they get their nets full of fish so that they're overflowing and Peter and the apostles are dragging the nets in that's what it means it means to drag that in you know, you can talk about drawing water from a well, but the word that's really used is they drag up the bucket. Well, God drags you to Jesus. God is the one who brings you to Jesus. He's the one that has given you to Jesus. It's not about what you do or even believe. It's about what the Holy Spirit does because we are saved by grace through faith. And so... It really is amazing that God has given you to Jesus. You know, it's kind of interesting. It's kind of like this amazing miracle that you're here August 8th, 2021 at the beautiful weather outside and you're sitting in here and you've come here and you get to come up here and eat of this bread that's been consecrated and we know it's the body of Christ and you say that you believe that's a miracle you know there's a lot of times that people don't believe they don't come to church but it's a miracle actually that you're here and why are you here because God has literally dragged you here with his Holy Spirit he draws you he's given you to Jesus we have been given to him and as it says, Jesus will not lose any of those that God has given him. You know, there's this story about this Muslim man that became Christian. And they asked him, why, whatever made you think about even becoming Christian, the Christian faith? And he said, well, because it's so absurd. You know, there's this God that's born and then he dies and then... If you want salvation, the first thing you have to do is say that I can't do anything myself to save myself. Those are such absurd things. And so the only way something like that could happen is if it's a miracle, if God literally does it. Which is what he does, what he does for us. So... We have this consecrated bread that you're going to come forward and receive. And when I declare the body of Christ, or Pastor Paul declares it's the body of Christ, and you receive it, you are saying that you believe that 
Jesus is God, that he is I am, that what he says is true, that it is the bread of life. And you're receiving this amazing gift that he gives God's grace and mercy, that when you come up and you receive that body and that blood, you're confessing, you're declaring that you have forgiveness of sins, that you have everlasting life. He said that this bread will give you everlasting. Have you thought about everlasting life ever? You know, if you Google it, there's a bunch of movies, like 20 of them out there, about having everlasting life. Now, the one that I like the most is, you know, Tucker Everlasting, because you know what that scene is. Many of you have seen it, right? That's Rock State Park on the king and queen seat, and you're looking out over Hartford County. You know, they filmed it here, so that's why I like it. Think about it, everlasting life. Would you really want everlasting life in this world? Because all of those movies actually talk about how bad it ultimately is having everlasting life here. But we have everlasting life because we have a heavenly home. We have this amazing place where we will be in God's presence and we are children of God and we have that inheritance. And so we receive that gift of everlasting life. We receive that bread, that bread of life when we come forward. Jesus will not lose any that God has given him. None of them. The last verse here, which happens to be the first verse next week. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. We know, because we know the rest of the story. Think of that audience in front of him. He's declaring this is his flesh. We know that that promise was kept, that he died on the cross for us so that we have forgiveness of sins, that he rose from the dead so that we have that everlasting life. We've been given this amazing grace and mercy from God. This is your gift. Now may that peace that passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds on our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We continue with the sacrament of the altar.
is my daily bread your very word spoken to me and I I'm desperate for you Now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in the true faith until life everlasting to depart in peace. Amen. And as we join together in the prayer which our Lord Jesus Christ has taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Pastor Blaze, our next steps. So it the end of that beloved Psalm 23, when David says, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever, you know, living, living like you live forever, you know, how would that look differently? You are living your eternal life. You've received that bread of life. Amen. And our benediction, God the Father, provider of daily bread, God the Son, living bread from heaven, God the Holy Spirit through whom we are gathered and by whom our faith is fed and nourished, bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. I look up towards the sky, eyes fixed on you. Your presence is where I hide. Above every fear I rise, eyes fixed on you. And you'll never leave my side. I follow your voice through the darkest of days Whatever may come, you'll carry me through Oh, you are the one I choose I am fixed on you I am 
is fixed on you. Peace, serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Through 